We're back out here once again, and today we're talking about some of my favorite colors for the month of October and into the fall. I'm not only going to show you what they are, but we'll also talk about how and when I like to use them. Stick around, you don't want to miss this one. Ooh, there we go, I got him. Right there. Whoa, that's not a bad one either. Ooh, check you out, buddy. Whoa, where are you going? And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations! If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And now that most of the country is experiencing cooler temperatures, especially at night, we're moving from the fall transition where those bass are coming from their summer homes out deep to the fall feed where those bass are now beginning to feed up on bait, on crawl, on whatever they can find in preparation for a long cold winter. Now, you have a diverse array of baits that you can choose from that may be effective because that bite is really starting to pick up. But I find that there are certain colors and presentations that really help me dial in that bite. And I'm catching not only lots of fish, I'm catching some really good quality ones too. Here in the past couple of weeks, I've caught multiple three, four, and five pound bass, which is a lot of fun, especially considering what a grind August and September was. Now, before I get started, I want to thank everyone who stopped by my shop over at my Shopify and purchased the jigs. I was really, really impressed with the support. So thank you so much. Again, there's going to be a link down in the description and in the pinned comment below where you can see we've got some gorgeous jigs in a wide array of color that you guys are just going to love. So check it out. These things start at $4.49 and they don't get any more expensive than $5.99. So we kept the price low. So again, check out my Shopify shop. I'm really confident you guys are going to like these jigs. So what colors am I using? What am I starting out with? Well, if I have a sunny day like I've got today and maybe just a little bit of wind, but not a whole lot of wind, I'm going to be going something like this smoke colored fluke, right? This little soft plastic jerkbait in this smoke shad color it's under that smooth water it's got a good contrast maybe there's a light ripple on the water maybe there's just a little bit of wave action hardly any current plenty of sun this is going to stand out just fine and it's going to look like those shad and those shiners and those minnows that are about this size now i can work this basically on a weightless setup sometimes i'll put a small nail weight in it but for the most part this is what's getting crushed and I'm using this fairly close to the bank or in a shallow flat and I get munched on these all the time. A smoke colored soft plastic jerk bait whenever it's sunny, whenever you've got some calm weather is just a great way to catch some awesome fish. Now if we've got some cloud cover, if we've got a little bit of stain in the water, if we've got some wind action, then I'm going to go with a pure white because that white just glows under the water in those circumstances. It's a great way to get the attention of those fish. It still looks plenty natural and it still looks just like what those bass are going for. But with that cloud cover, maybe some darker skies, maybe just a little bit of a ripple, maybe some wave action, maybe some stain in the water. This can really stand out. And again, serve to attract those bass. It's been a great color for me all year, but especially now. We've got a lot more wind than we had during the summer, so we're getting more wave action. We're getting a little bit more silt stirred up in the water, so it's got a little bit of stain to it. So that white can really shine through. And it also goes as far as working top water. Something like a bone walking bait. And this is just that Yozuri. A bone head and spook also works great or maybe even a white frog white is a great color for top water but during the day whenever you've got a lot of bluebird skies you've got maybe just a little bit of wind action i'm using this white is my go-to color it's going to be one of the first colors that i pick out it's going to be one of the very first colors that i have tied on whenever i head out to the water especially when i know there's going to be a good bit of sun outside 
All right, let's say we're moving back away from the bank a little bit. We want to go back into some deeper water and we still have bluebird skies and not a lot of wind, maybe just a little bit. But sometimes I want to break out this guy. This is obviously that old H2O Express jerkbait. I've had this thing for years. It's been on the channel so many times. I call it the lucky jerkbait. It's got that translucent color. It's got just a little bit of that green on the top that really stands out whenever there's just a light chop on the water. We've got a little bit of wind and there's some clarity to the water. We've got three, four, five foot of visibility. That's when something like this works so well. It mimics what those bass are seeing because a lot of times those shad, those minnows, those shiner, they're actually translucent. If they've got some sun or light behind them, you can pretty much see right through them and this mimics that so well. A jerkbait works good. A crankbait can work good. You know, something that's got that clear translucent color. Now, Another color that's also working is something like a ghost shad, right? Like this Berkeley Stunna. Again, this is that semi-translucent. It shows up really good in lighter color. It's got that darker back. Again, it kind of stands out. It looks like what those bass are looking for. And this color right here, this particular color has been money, not just with a jerkbait, but also with a lipless crankbait or a square bill, but especially with this guy right here, that smoke color, that shad color, that ghost shad color can be so effective, especially on a day when you've got very clear water. You've got, like I said, three to five foot of visibility or more. You've got bluebird skies, those translucent types of colors, and you're fishing them just a little bit deeper off of the bank. Like we talked about, even if you're bank fishermen, you can still hit those spots of waters with a jerk bait and they work so well. And again, if I've got some wave, I've got some wind action, maybe got a little bit of stain in the water, then I'm going to go with a harder white simply because that solid body is going to have more reflectivity under the water and this is actually going to stand out much more. So whenever I have that windier wave water, whenever I have that more wave action, whenever I have that stain in the water and I'm fishing a jerk bait or I'm fishing a crankbait or something similar, I'm going to go with a hard white. Something like a red eye shad, you know, that lipless crankbait in that sexy shad color. A KVD square bill in that sexy shad color. That white really presents a good contrast under the water whenever you've got the waves, whenever you've got a little bit of wind and you've got a little bit of stain. It gives those bass something to focus on. So you attract them in with the sound, with the rattle and the movement. But once they get close and they're about to strike, that good contrast gives them something to hone in on. And another thing is, is if I've got some clouds, say I've got a mostly cloudy day or a completely cloudy day, and it doesn't really have to be windy, although wind may help just a little bit, especially if we've got some generated current. I like to go with something that's got a bit of a little flash in it, like this little KVD jerk bait. I mean, you guys can see how just munched up this poor thing is. I've had this thing for a couple of years and it just gets absolutely destroyed. Although it's a smaller presentation, but a chrome style. It doesn't have to be completely chrome, but something that's got some flash, something that's got a little sparkle to it in that stained water or on those cloudy days, again, can serve as a great tool for attracting those bass. It can bring those bass closer into your bait, especially from a distance. It gets that little flash under the water. They see that little flicker under the water and they can hone in on it. And that bait just absolutely gets crushed. So what if I'm fishing the bottom? What if I'm fishing more toward the bottom? Well, we talked about this before. Even in a clear water fishery, even away from the bank, there's still plenty of shade in that water, especially this time of year as that sun is hanging lower in the sky. It's going to be casting longer shadows even during the middle of the day. And that applies underwater as well as hydrilla, as laydowns, as grasses. All these things that are underneath the surface of the water that we don't see are actually casting long shadows. In those instances, well, I'm going with something dark like this. This is one of my jigs in the color called Dusk Dark. This is one of my flipping jigs. And a darker color like this actually has that great contrast. It sticks out under the water in that shade. And those types of darker colors have really been productive for me. Something like a black blue flake worm, something like a June bug worm. But these black blue flake worms, 
I have been getting crushed on these and it can be completely sunny outside. In fact, it has often been very sunny outside when I'm using a color like this. And you might think to yourself, lowbrow, those are colors you use whenever the water stained or whenever there's low light conditions. I'm telling you, pick up these darker colors around vegetation, around laydowns, around places that have a lot of shade underwater. Try them out. And I'm telling you, you are going to get crushed. It might seem like it's odd, but it's very, very effective. So there you have it. Some really easy color choices. You don't need a thousand colors, although you might get some good bites. These colors really help me dial in some consistent bites and some really quality fish. Try them out. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.